People should expect the real me in this and probably the me that they've never gotten to know, certainly not in the past few years, um, where everything is through the lens of the media as opposed to, hey, it's me. It's um, hard. You know, I don't think anybody could understand that. It's not many people have asked if I'm okay. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Exposing SMG. Of course there is drama today, because what else does Meghan Markle do except rile up everyone with her claims? Finally, after pleading with her and her husband, Prince Harry, to do some work for the multi-million dollar deals they've been signing since leaving the royal family, Meghan has graced us today with the first official podcast episode where she made some interesting claims. The podcast is called Archetypes, where she basically discusses stereotypes that women face. Hey, it's me. I'm just excited to be myself and talk and be unfiltered. Her first guest is Serena Williams, who Megan tells a story about the time that Archie's nursery supposedly caught on fire. What does that have to do with archetypes that women face? The world may never know. Now I say supposedly because whenever Megan tells any sort of story, it eventually gets disproved, so her credibility is down the toilet in my eyes. People also think she's a compulsive liar, so there's that. Now I don't know if she's lying about this because I figure there would be physical evidence that a fire took place, but who knows. You guys let me know what you think, and I will talk about whether or not this is a lie later on in the video because there are already a bunch of inconsistencies that I found, so be sure to stay tuned until the end. Now for context, they landed in South Africa on September 23rd, 2019, where they first stopped at the British High Commissioner's residence in Cape Town before heading out to the initial engagements in Nyanga that Megan mentions in the podcast. Later that same day, they had further engagements at District 6 Museum and District 6 Homecoming Center in Zonablom, Cape Town. After finishing one of the engagements, Megan describes being told, There's been a fire in the baby's room, at the housing unit where they were staying. According to Megan, their nanny, Lauren, was supposed to put Archie down for his nap, but decided to get a snack downstairs, bringing the baby along. When we went on our tour to South Africa, we landed with Archie, Megan began. Archie was what, four and a half months old? And the moment we landed, we had to drop him off at this housing unit that they had us staying in. Right off the bat, the words she's using to describe what happened shows us exactly what route this is going. The moment we landed, we had to drop him off at this housing unit they had us staying in. Just say you were going to work, a work-related event. But no, leave it to her to already start with the dramatics. She's also making it seem like she got kidnapped and was forced to go do these chores and forced to put her baby down. And when she uses words like housing unit, she's making it seem like she lived with a bunch of villagers. In America, there is a negative connotation with housing units. They are sometimes referred to as sections of prisons or units for low-income families. And in regards to prisons, it's where the inmates sleep and have indoor recreation facilities. But the so-called housing unit that poor little Meghan Markle stayed at was the High Commissioner's house. Yes, the High Commissioner's house. This is the housing unit she stayed in. Yeah, a literal mansion where she also later attended a reception there, as you can see. So picking up where Megan left off in the quote, she says that he was getting ready to go down for his nap and that they immediately went to an official engagement in Nyanga. And she says, and there was this moment where I'm standing on a tree stump and I'm giving this speech to women and girls and we finish the engagement. We get in the car and they say, there's been a fire at the residence. What? There's been a fire in the baby's room. What? Again with the wording. We immediately went to an official engagement. Yeah, girl, people are waiting for you. Nothing wrong with immediately tending to work. It's not like you have a nine to five that you have to clock into. And the story continues with her saying, in that amount of time that she went downstairs, the heater in the nursery caught on fire. There was no smoke detector. Someone happened to just smell smoke down the hallway, went in, fire extinguished. He was supposed to be sleeping in there. 
Thankfully, Archie's fine and he wasn't in there, but what rubs me the wrong way is that she tells the story as if she's trying so hard to say, they almost killed my baby by forcing me to go to work. Instead of saying, thankfully he wasn't in there when it happened, she makes it a point to say, he was supposed to be sleeping in there. It just rubs me the wrong way. Something about this has to be unethical. Maybe it's just me. You guys let me know what you think. Her delivery seems to have a hidden agenda. A vendetta that she's itching to scratch. Megan recalled that everyone was in tears and shaken by the incident, but she says that she and Prince Harry had another official engagement scheduled for that day and they weren't able to cancel it. I was like, can you just tell people what happened? Optically, the focus ends up being on how it looks instead of how it feels. We have to leave our baby. Optically, anything Meghan does or says nowadays has to always be related back to the big bad royal family and how being a royal is the worst thing on earth. South Africans also expressed how they were upset with Meghan retelling the story in a negative light, making the country look bad. One person wrote, This happened in 2019. Put that in the headline before trying to put our country in a bad light. We bother no one. Please, why is she tarnishing my country's name? She could have shut her mouth. Surely this could have happened anywhere, no need to mention our country like that. It's sad that this is what she chooses to share of her time in South Africa. And I don't know what Archie's nursery supposedly catching on fire has to do with archetypes, but leave it to Meghan to desperately try to tie back her days with the royal family to get people to talk about this podcast. This is how she tried to make relevance of the story. She says, and part of the humanizing and the breaking through of these labels and these archetypes and these boxes that we're put into is having some understanding on the human moments behind the scenes that people might not have any awareness of and to give each other a break because we did. We had to leave our baby. Like, what are you saying? She's just rambling at an effort to make a correlation between her story and the stupid theme of the podcast. I'm just, uh, I'm speechless. What does that have to do with anything? What do stereotypes have to do with the heater supposedly catching on fire in a nursery? Instead of, I don't know, shedding light on how the community she's visiting probably doesn't have the means to have a fire alarm or that this could happen to other babies in the village, the topic is somehow about how the bad people made her leave her baby. And the part about her saying, I was like, can you just tell people what happened? Of course you would love that Megan. Of course you want the attention because the Megan of that time was also complaining about privacy and how she doesn't want anyone to know anything about her personal life. She literally sued a company over taking photos of her and Archie, yet she's the same one complaining about why there wasn't an official press statement about a heater supposedly catching on fire while her infant son wasn't in the room. Like why? What was the reason? What was the reason? reason. What was the reason? reason? Well, let's take a look at the headlines. The only reason anyone knows that Megan has a podcast out today is because of this story and the only relevance Megan has, which is her olden days with the royal family. The US media is of course running with the story, with headlines being written the exact way Megan would have wanted it. People reports, Meghan Markle reveals she had to continue Africa tour despite a fire breaking out in Archie's room. Notice how it's worded. Fire breaking out. Still had to continue the Africa tour. The Daily Beast writes, Meghan Markle says royal handlers sent her out to work right after Archie's room caught on fire. The show must go on. The Duchess said her baby's nursery caught fire during a 2019 visit to South Africa, but palace officials immediately sent her out to work at an official engagement anyway. E! News writes, Meghan Markle recalls terrifying moment Archie's nursery caught on fire during South African tour. In the premiere episode of her Archetypes podcast, Meghan Markle shared the alarming moment she and Prince Harry learned Archie's nursery caught on fire during a 2019 tour of South Africa. You guys get the point. The media, especially the US media, are writing their headlines with an agenda and a motive that Meghan had to once again make the royal family look bad. It's bad enough that she came running back to them to attend the Queen's Platinum Jubilee after all she and Harry spewed in the media, but nonetheless, they continue. And I say they because Meghan and Harry are a package deal. What one says, the other allows to happen. It's like being an accomplice to a crime. It's also funny because this same tour in Africa is where she said, And also thank you for asking, because not many people have asked if I'm okay. <laughs> it always makes me laugh. 
Megan in Africa talking to people who are much less fortunate than her, but still being on candid camera like, not many people have asked if I'm okay. How are you doing charity and seeing how people can live beyond their means and yet you still make it about yourself? I spoke about this whole situation on Twitter and you guys had some insightful things to say, as usual. One user said, The fire alarm has gone off at work a few times and we've had to vacate the building. After standing outside watching firefighters for 10 minutes, we actually had to go back to work. Oh, the humanity. Another said, So it was hot. Someone put the heater on, which got burned because it was even too hot for the heaters. There was some smoke, maybe some sparkles from electricity, but mostly it stunk with burned plastic. Normal people get along with their life after, especially go to work. And it seemed like Megan did go along with her work and didn't make a sob story out of what could have been a tragedy because a few hours later, after the avoided tragedy, Harry and her were pictured smiling at the second engagement they tended to and being all jolly. Not looking anxious, distraught, worried, nothing at all. And as she retells the story in the podcast, she makes it seem like she was fighting tears while being at work. But nope, she's completely fine. Does this look like a woman who is hiding tears or trying to put on a brave face? She looks fine, considering nothing happened. If anything, she should be relieved. But nope, she'd rather hold someone accountable for what could have happened. You know who wasn't fine? Harry, who kept pushing Meghan's possessive hands away when they were at the UN meeting this past July. So if they were pretending to be okay in Africa, I'm sure they could have pretended to be okay at the UN meeting. But no, nope. Harry is visibly irritated with Meghan here and it reads all over his face. Let me know if you guys want a video about that, the way Harry desperately wants his personal space for Meghan. Now back to Meghan trying her best to paint a sob story out of a tragedy avoided. On September 25, 2019, two days later after the incident happened, Archie made an appearance at his first official engagement. There was an entire photo shoot. Megan said, if you guys aren't getting us some publicity by using my son and talking about this heater fire, I'll get it for myself then. I'm kidding, not really. Again, the issue with Megan is that she takes a story and thinks, hmm, how can I make myself look like a victim whilst also bringing attention to myself as I cry about publicity and whine about the royal family, which is frankly the only reason people still talk about me. And when I don't have any more attention, I beg to be invited to an event that is honoring the woman that runs the family. Like it must be tiring being this fake and calculated. It has to be. And if this story really did happen, why did nothing about the incident leak? So many reporters were covering their tour in South Africa, and magically no one found out about it? No one heard about it? Considering they were around so many people when it apparently happened. They also went from one engagement to another, immediately, as Megan claimed. Immediately! Immediately! Surely someone would have overheard something, or someone would have said something. Russell Myers, a reporter who was there during the time, was questioned as to why he didn't report about the fire. He said, First I've heard of it, to be honest. I do recall the beautiful sunny weather in Cape Town that day, though. Ah, the weather. It's usually really hot in September in Africa. So why was a heater on in the first place? Let's add this to the list of questions Megan will never answer. And honestly, if the ambassador's house was on fire, there would have been fire engines putting it out, or people checking the residence to make sure it was secure, or maybe giving it all new wiring considering it was newly built, following an actual fire 20 years earlier. And royal reporters would know about it. All of South Africa would know about it. But nope. Magically, the news of this fire has been kept under wraps until Meghan Markle decided to tell us the story on a podcast with Serena Williams. Speaking of Serena Williams, isn't she the guest? Why are we hearing more about Megan and her victimizing life than the actual guest? Most people believe that this podcast was Megan's version of damage control, considering Tom Bauer questioned the legitimacy of Megan and Serena's friendship, and she needed something to justify her tone-deaf interview in Africa. Plus, she couldn't help herself when it came to attacking the royal family and royal work. What a mess. Anyway, there is so much more to discuss about what was said in the podcast episode, especially with Megan's other shenanigans, so let me know if you guys want a video about that. Definitely leave me your thoughts in the comments down below. I need to read what you guys have to say and tell me if you believe her story or not. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to follow us on our social media where we always interact with you guys. Like and subscribe for more and as always, I'll see you next time.